Good morning. It is Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, and I am Pastor Mark Dilley of West Valley Grace Fellowship. I pray that the message this morning will be used to strengthen you in your faith and encourage you in your walk with our Savior and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. To begin with, I want to express that I believe in the verbal plenary inspiration of Scripture in the original manuscripts. Most of the apparent contradictions and confusions can be resolved through a dispensational approach to the Word of God. Understanding that God had a plan for Israel and a kingdom here on earth. And God has a plan for the church, the body of Christ and for its heavenly existence for all eternity. And in this process, understanding that we live today in the dispensation of the grace of God. And it is a revelation of truth or a body of truth which God had kept secret since the foundation of the world but is now made known originally through the Apostle Paul. And now down through the years, it is still the gospel of salvation for today. And so today, what is the gospel of our salvation? As we've been going through these studies right now, we're doing a, a comparison of what was taught to Israel in regards to their kingdom and what was taught today to the church, the body of Christ, in regards to their salvation and existence in the church, the body of Christ. And so the gospel of our salvation is not found any place in any of the four gospels. There is some not references to it, but verses that can be manipulated a little bit to insert this gospel into it. But it is not the gospel of salvation for today. And Paul says that there's coming a day when God is going to judge the world according to his gospel. And so this is a very important and critical issue. And what I'm endeavoring to demonstrate through the truth of the Word of God is the fact that many people believe that they should follow the earthly message of Jesus Christ. He was God in the flesh. He was the sinless Son of God. But he was the Messiah to Israel. He was the king of Israel. And his purpose in coming to the earth at that time in the revelation that was given was to redeem those under the law. Though he was here for the redemption of Israel. And the scriptures taught that when that was completed, then the Gentile would also have opportunity to come in to this kingdom. And so today we're going to talk about what did the Lord Jesus Christ tell people when they came to him asking about eternal life compared to what the Apostle Paul has declared for us today on how to be saved or to how to have eternal life. And so let's examine some of the declarations which the Messiah, the Lord of, the God of Israel, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, declared while he ministered during his first advent. Uh, and see if that is valid for today. Now, it's important to understand that in no way am I diminishing the Lord Jesus Christ's ministry or depreciating the importance of his gospel 
to Israel. But what I am pointing out is that that gospel is not the gospel for us today. And that's what's so critical to understand. The Lord Jesus Christ had a dual purpose in his incarnation and in his death on the cross. The prophesied purpose regarding this kingdom was that Jesus Christ would die for the sins of Israel. The revelation given to Paul is that now Gentiles will not have to wait for Israel's kingdom. That in the gospel, the grace of God, anyone, Jew or Gentile, can be redeemed by faith alone in the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. And so let's look at some of the things that Jesus Christ declared. But before we do that, I want to impress that I believe everything that Jesus Christ said is true, it is valid, and I can accept every statement he made without any doubt. But what I want to point out is that he was not talking to me. He was talking to his chosen people, Israel. And so let's look at, first of all, about some statements about why Jesus Christ came at that time. In Galatians 4, 4 and 5, it says this, But when the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Now, when Paul says that we might receive the full rights as sons, he's talking about himself as a Jew, himself as one living under the law. He's not talking about the Gentiles who were never under the law. Let's look at Romans 5, 8, where Paul says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. And so the purpose of Jesus Christ's original coming as far as the revelation that was given was that he was here to fulfill all that the prophets had declared. In Matthew 15, 24, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said this. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. In Matthew 15, 26, he answered in the same, to this same woman, It is not meat to give the children's bread and take it or and to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs what he was saying was it was not fit at that time while he was here on earth to take the truth of the kingdom and the salvation that was going to be theirs in this glorious kingdom they were going to participate in it was not at this point in time that he was to take it to the Gentiles. And yet, because of this Gentile's great faith, he did answer her request. Let's look at Matthew 10, 5 through 7. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and to any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you can compare that passage with Luke 10, 1 and following. So when the Lord Jesus Christ, here on earth, with his ministry to Israel, was asked 
what must I do to gain eternal life? Or how can I uh, enter the kingdom? Whatever the expression might be. Let's look at what he responded with. In Matthew 9, 16 and 17. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. That was his instructions to this man. If he wants to have eternal life, keep the commandments. And then later in this passage, in verse 21, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Now, there may be some people today, but I'm not aware of them, that sells everything they have and follows Christ, thinking that's how they will get to heaven. And this is the way it was in the early church. They sold their lands and their possessions and gave it all to the church. And, and then it was dispensed according to their needs, and none of them lacked while this was actually functioning according to God's purpose. But how many do that today? So are we to follow what Christ said in regards to how to have eternal life? Or then again in Matthew 25, beginning with verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom of prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. And so again, he's telling them, that if they want to have eternal life, this is the lifestyle that is expected from them to have the kingdom. In Mark 10, 29 and 30, he says this, And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake, and the Gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now. In other words, he's telling them that if you live this way, if you forsake everything to serve him, you will receive a hundredfold now at this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. That is what must be done. A person must sacrifice everything in the kingdom to have eternal life. Not only will he be blessed at this time, but he will have all of these things in eternity. And then Luke 10, 25 through 28. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou answerest right, this do, and thou shalt live. In other words, to inherit eternal life under the gospel of the kingdom, you must sacrifice everything. 
You must trust totally in Jesus Christ as the Messiah and be willing to give up all you have for him. And then there's many others. John 5, 39 through 40, John 68 through 69, John 12, 25, John 7, 17, 3. It all talks about eternal life and how you can attain it. Now, are these the ways by which we are saved today? It should be readily apparent that there are certain things missing in every one of these declarations by Jesus Christ. There is no reference whatsoever of the cross. There's no reference whatsoever of his death. No reference whatsoever of the blood of Christ that was shed so we could have the forgiveness of our sins. Compare that teaching of Christ with the salvation that Paul has made known for the world today. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, Otherwise, ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you that which, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Paul's focus is not on behavior. Paul's focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ and his death on the cross for our sins. Today, the gospel of salvation is about a person's sins condemning him and a person's faith in Jesus Christ that delivers him from the condemnation of his sins and not only delivers him from that condemnation, but now it causes God to declare him righteous in our Heavenly Father's sight. That's the marvelous gospel of the grace of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And there are a host more of scriptures talking about what Paul's gospel is all about. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 17 and 18, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. And then in Ephesians 1, 7, he says, In whom, referring to Christ and his work on the cross, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. This is the marvelous gospel of salvation for today. And in a crypto quote I once solved, it declared that ignorance is not so great a sin as being unwilling to learn. I pray that the truth of God's word will be impressed upon your heart. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this marvelous revelation concerning our salvation today. 
that it was through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us, that we have our salvation. It's not based upon any of our behaviors, but it's by grace through faith alone. And that is not found any place in the Gospels regarding the Lord's earthly ministry. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.